Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to cover together the inauguration of uh, a number of agricultural developmental projects in uh, the south of the valley or in Tushkal here. The president inaugurated a number of projects and we are going to continue with covering the important issue as we do have our dear guest on via phone, uh, engineer Hassan Chaban, our economic expert. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, well project of Tushka inaugurated uh, this project or to be accurate we announced the addition of uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of pheasants to our agricultural map how do you see sir the significance of this and how do you see the state's keenness to uh, introduce um, all these achievements to the citizens to make sure that we are working hard to narrow the food gap and to maintain our national food security you see, everybody had a, a, an impression that uh, the Tushka project was uh, not a successful project uh, when it started uh, many decades ago. Mm -hmm. But now the spirit is coming back to Tushka, and we are scoring uh, a lot of really points, and uh, uh, Tushka is becoming a very important element on the ag agro map in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, upgraded the systems, uh, that uh, the irrigation systems in, in Tushka, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, invaded a lot of areas uh, uh, between Owainat and Tushka. Uh, now Tushka is really, really back uh, alive, and uh, uh, it added a, a huge area, really, uh, planted with a strategic Crops. And so, yes, sir. Uh, and we we listened or we heard um, many uh, relatively new terms yesterday. For example, we introduced or we uh, we said uh, or we informed the Egyptians about jojoba, for example, and how we took on into consideration that jojoba is going to be one of the targets, one of the goals. Biofuel is one of the future fuels. And Egypt is all the time uh, a pioneer when it comes to things which, um, it, it, which is included into our sustainable development goals. For example, how do you see the jujuba issue? Well, uh, the jujuba uh, uh, tree actually is a very uh, new plant to Egypt. Uh, uh, and actually, uh, the oil actually that is produced out of the jujuba is a very very uh, expensive and uh, rare and it's 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 used in many uh, fields now uh, as uh, in many cases a fuel or uh, medical uh, a supplement or something like that so actually jujuba is a, uh, is is a, is a plant if we actually uh, uh, you know uh, plant lot large areas of the jujuba we will have an industry uh, next to, to the uh, to the fields of the jujuba in this area, especially in the in the south. Actually, where yeah. the jujuba tree actually found a, a, a very suitable nature, soil-wise and environment. Uh, and I think within the next five years, uh, the jujuba uh, oil will be one of the main products that we export. Inshallah. Also, one of or some terms which were used yesterday: smart agriculture, clean agriculture, using AI in agriculture. Meaning that the whole project is based on scientific rules. It's not haphazardly. And we took into consideration that the lack of data was one of the main obstacles on the way. Now we know everything about the type of the soil, about the uh, climate um, atmosphere, about the environmental issues, everything. How do you see this, sir? And how do you see also having a special place for labs or research centers inside the project to make sure that any uh, problem is going to be solved on the spot and there? Actually, uh, what's happening right now is really what we've been uh, asking for uh, since a long time, because uh, once we uh, cultivate areas uh, uh, far from the valley and the delta, we need to be self-sufficient. We have the labs, uh, we have the, even the uh, 
uh, villages that you actually accommodate the labor in it. Uh, uh, actually, this is a new approach to uh, defeating the desert, actually. We are actually working very hard. Uh, of course, you cannot really do what, 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 what we've done and accomplish it successfully without really a scientific approach mm -hmm. because you, you would be taking a, a big risk if you just go to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the desert without really having the right uh, data about the salinity of, uh, of the soil or the water, uh, the reserves of the water. Uh, everything should be there because this will help you to choose the right crop. Uh, I would like to add something, if you, if you don't mind. Sure. As long as we started to grow uh, trees like the jojoba and, and so forth, and we, we're not only uh, growing uh, strategic crops like wheat and so forth, I would like uh, to uh, say that in, in the U.K., for a company, uh, uh, for a country like uh, the U.K., where they have a very fertile soil, uh, produced out of Yorkshire. Actually, they actually take the soil and pack it in sacks, and they sell they, this soil to help uh, raided land to be fertile and be able to support trees. In the, uh, the, the Aswan, the high dam uh, uh, lake, there is a lot of silt and mud uh, settled in the uh, in the lake. I would really recommend dredging this mud and this silt to the banks of the lake, dry it, and set, put it in sacks, and uh, 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 use the, this mud in uh, in the program of growing trees. We can grow a lot of trees. Actually, not only the jojoba. But a lot of trees, instead of just cultivating a large area, we just cultivate where we're going to grow the trees. Sir, I beg your pardon. This is to change the nature of the soil or to be exactly. used as, exactly. as fertilizer. Exactly. Because, you know, uh, sandy soil, uh, uh, water seeps, the seepage uh, of water in sandy soil is, is really a main issue. Yeah. But once <clears throat> you stabilize, the soil by using mud, which is very rich. It is a rich, the richest. Our delta, our delta in the north is made out of this mud. Actually, yeah, sure. So, so actually, if we can utilize uh, the uh, sedimentation behind the uh, the high dam, and uh, and dry it, and make a program uh, uh, that we actually sell this mud, dried mud to people who will uh, work in uh, agro programs in yeah. the desert, uh, we definitely can grow a huge number of trees, uh, uh, oranges, uh, uh, tangerines, anything, anything. Everything. Uh, uh, and as far as I understand, right sir, this world. mud was the reason that Egypt succeeded in producing the, uh, the very famous long-stable cotton because of this mud, this mud which made uh, our uh, our land, our soil very fertile to to um, to absorb, to be able to shoulder to, or to bear um, such a strategic crop like a long stable cotton, as it's very exhausting for the soil, as far as I understand. Th but this is very true. Very uh, true. Let me go to another uh, issue, which uh, is the uh, infrastructure, to develop mm -hmm. the infrastructure and to make sure that we uh, guarantee uh, the, um, the very easy move uh, um, between um, um, different provinces in Upper Egypt. Um, simply, this was also one of uh, the uh, issues which were taken into consideration that without uh, a whole network of new roads and access, it's not going to work. How also do you see that yesterday the president was keen to inaugurate a number of roads and access to make sure that what we have done is not going to be impeded by any obstacle and that the roads and the access are also ready to facilitate our movement? Well, they, what happened really in the field of uh, infrastructure is, is really 
one cannot really uh, imagine it uh, uh, five or six years ago. I mean, this is something that we never really dreamt of. This is uh, we're adding not only for you know agro land, but we're adding areas to that were not accessible in the past. Wainat and, and uh, you know, the connection between Farafra and Wainat, the east of Wainat, this mm-hmm. was like a dream. But now we have uh, the, the roads, we have uh, everything. Now it is very easy to any investor to go to these areas and uh, have his project actually really easy, especially uh, for, you know, for the first time, uh, the government actually is paying attention uh, to the fact that a lot of very heavy trucking that will be carrying uh, crops will use these roads. So uh, some of these roads are made out of concrete, actually, not only pay- regular pavement. No, there is certain lanes for the, you know, for the heavy trucking not to, d- to damage the, the 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 normal highway. So yeah. uh, uh, so we actually we're we're using very scientific approach uh, in in this project actually. Engineer Shaban, also um, it was said yesterday that it's time for us as Egyptians to move to the to the south. We live on only maybe seven to eight percent of uh, um, of uh, the Egyptian uh, lands, and um, uh, as the Americans are saying, build it and they'll come. Simply the, the state build it, and new, new urban communities are um, established, and new uh, villages and cities are only waiting for the Egyptian youth to go and to turn the, um, the, uh, uh, the golden uh, sands we have into greeneries. Um, is it now time to change this culture? I mean, um, with all these projects. Um, do you think that this is going to change our culture as Egyptians, that we, only, um, uh, we are only located in the delta, around the Nile, in the already crowded cities? Isn't it time to go there and to enjoy other beautiful parts of our country? Definitely. Uh, you see, the problem is, uh, in, in, in our country is not uh, the high population, actually. It's the bad distribution of this population. This population is concentrated in the delta and the valley. So, actually, we need to have a very ambitious program to relocate and de- redistribute our population on the whole area of Egypt, the one million square kilometers that we have, actually. So these new projects actually uh, sh- will definitely attract a lot of industries because uh, some of these areas will have the raw materials for agro-industrial uh, uh, projects, actually. Mm-hmm. The perfume uh, and medical plants and so forth that will grow in these areas uh, will definitely attract a lot of industries. Instead of uh, paying uh, uh, high amounts of money uh, to uh, transport the, uh, the crops, uh, I think uh, a lot of industries could be established in the same area where we grow the crop. Yeah. And this would require to relocate the labors. And I think if uh, we just change the philosophy of the housing uh, to be uh, suitable uh, for the young people who will start their life uh, and make it easy for them to live in very simple houses, suitable to the climate and the area, similar to uh, engineer Hassan Fathi uh, actually designs uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in these areas, actually. Yeah. I think we need to have a, a, an integrated program to redistribute the population, uh, create chances to attract the young people to go and work in these areas, uh, retrain a lot of our young people to the new methods of, uh, of uh, irrigation and the, the use of uh, modern equi- the harvest uh, equipment, uh, uh, equipment. We need to have a, a complete project, actually, we uh, already have uh, an integrated vision regarding our Desert. mega projects. And, sir, by the way, thank you very much for mentioning our great architect, Hassan Fathi, because we do have genius, uh, um, genius figures in all domains.
um, engineer Hassan Shaban, our economic and agricultural um, expert. Thank you very much for your input, sir, and have a very good day. Before, uh, before we take a break, let me say thank you to those who have chosen the names of the new access which uh, were inaugurated yesterday. Access of um, late martyr Hisham Barakat, the former Attorney General. Access of Dr. Um, uh, um, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Siddiq al Manshawi, one of the great men of reciting the Holy Quran, one of our Sheikhs. Uh, Sheikh um, Muhammad Sayyid Tantawi, former uh, Grand Imam of Al Azhar. Um, Dr. Samir Farag, one of the heroes of the armed forces. And by the way, Dr. Samir was there and he watched the inauguration of this axis, which was named after him. Egypt never forgets its sons, never forgets those who worked hard and sacrificed everything for the best interest of our beloved nation. Thank you for everyone who have chosen those names because they really deserve to be immortalized. Right after the short break, we are going to turn back with more. So stay tuned.